Our scripture today comes from Proverbs. It's not one I normally associate with generosity, but it kept coming back to me as I was thinking about the mission initiative Develop Disciples to Serve. Proverbs 22.6 says, Train children in the right way, and when old, they will not stray. As a mom of three kids, on most days, those 13 words sum up the entire goal of my momness. I'm supposed to help my kids learn how to tie their shoes, to be compassionate friends, have good manners, no burping or weird armpit noises at the table, learn how to spell and count and read, to be a good sport both on and off the field, to grow in their relationship with God, and be generous disciples. And that's just to name a few. I mean, I might have to lay down for a minute because that is a lot. But never fear, because Jack and Jen's generosity jar is here. These super cool banks have been a great tool as our family's been talking about money. One of my favorite things about the generosity jar is that it's eliminated the haphazard money storage systems going on at our house. So we used to have a pig bank that oinks uh, for savings. We had a coin purse for spending, and we had a secret safe location for sharing that sometimes was so secret we couldn't remember where it went. But let's be clear, these jars will not keep your kids from making weird noises with their armpits. But it does open lots of ways to talk about how sharing, saving, and spending work together, and how to be generous in all the parts of our lives, not just at church, but at school and work and at home too. So as I'm thinking about all this, I'm taking a moment to pat myself on the back and be like, look at me, yes, being all intentional about developing my sweet little disciples and training my children in right ways, yay. And then, and then, and then I remember a time not too long ago that had absolutely nothing to do with me and my good parenting checklist and everything to do with God's grace. About two and a half years ago at Spectacular, Community of Christ's annual gathering for teens from across all North America, the worship team was going to do a drama about human trafficking. And they were looking for some kids to participate. And my daughter Jillian, who was about 10 at the time, she happened to be on campus that day. So they assured her that it was just a walk on part with no lines and all she had to do was stand there with some other kids. So she agreed and during that powerful drama, Jillian walked on at just the right time and she was the visual representation of kids her age who are trapped by the terrible effects of human trafficking. So afterwards, the worship team thanked her for participating and I didn't really think that more, anything more about it. So imagine my surprise when we're getting ready for church the next week and she yells upstairs, hey mom, how do you spell trafficking? I thought, I don't know. I'm coming downstairs to ask her, well, why, why do you need to spell that? And she looked at me only as a 10 year old can with a slight roll of her eyes and a tilt of her head. And she goes, mom, don't you remember at spec? There are kids my age who don't get to go to school and they have to work for no money. I'm giving my money to that today. And every week for the next six months, she gave 50 cents and wrote stop human trafficking on her envelope. And when an earthquake devastated Haiti in 2010, she decided to switch her giving to that pressing need. And she continues to give wherever her heart leads. That one moment, one that seemed fairly inconsequential to me, was transformative for Jillian. And when we give to support Christ's mission, we aren't just giving money, we're creating opportunities. Opportunities for learning and training and growing. Opportunities for the Spirit to move in and through us. Sometimes these opportunities are intentionally planned, like the generosity jars. And other times they are beautifully spontaneous, like Jillian's experience at SPEC. And here's the best part. Our giving can change the world in ways we never imagined because you never know when a disciple is being developed. As we generously share our gifts today, God is already moving ahead, creating new opportunities, and I can't wait to see what happens next.